Hey guys, I have this uh, super cool little trick that I've um, been using in some of my more um, illustration work, and I thought it's actually really helpful for uh, for map painting, especially when you have these these strong perspectives with repeating elements. Like, how many times have you been in an, uh, a situation where you have to create these kinds of pillars that repeat into a di into the distance? Uh, you know, regularly with perspective, uh, you know, scale and distance changes over over a large space. Like, say you're placing some uh, like light posts or or um, uh, electricity poles, and they're going off into the distance. Or maybe just something like more sci-fi that you've got some planets that are just all in alignment, or or ships that are in a formation. So I want to show you this. Uh, here I'm going to show you the the technique first and <clears throat> so what it is is if we just grab a line tool um, and actually, oh, let's let's do something that's a bit thicker and easier to there we go so normally we'd have to get our selection uh, our move tool and if I hold alt, I can I can move it to the side and then I can scale it. Uh, it's about that much. And then I have to do it again and try and guess the distance or the, you know, the relative distance. Um, and you might have some perspective lines to help you uh, to, to draw those. Uh, but you're still guessing in terms of like how much to scale it by <clears throat> and how, how far to move it. So instead of that, what we can do is we can do, so if I duplicate the layer, we can do this. All right, so I've changed that. Uh, I've, I've positioned it and I've corrected just for that perspective, uh, that one copy, and that's now in perspective, and I can do this. So. What this is doing is repeating the process of the transform uh, based on the scale, the distance, and any movement uh, changes that I did with that. So the way you do this is first you have to you have to duplicate your layer. So Control J is what I do to duplicate it, and then you activate the transform by Control T. Uh, you can also right click. Uh, sorry, you can go yeah, edit. Uh, transform here free transform so we have to activate that on the original position otherwise it's not going to know uh, how far we moved it so if we move this first across and then activate our transform it doesn't know how far we've moved it in fact if we just do that and say I then scale this and I repeat it it's just adding it underneath it, you know, it's just shrinking it basically on the spot. All right, so let's go back, duplicate that, activate our transform, move it to the distance that we want it to, to be for the first rep repetition, and the scale, like let's say we had some perspective lines, so we're matching up with those. <clears throat> scale it down, do whatever transforms you want, press enter, and then to repeat this process, it's Control Alt Shift and T and then just hold those and keep pressing T and that will repeat it into the distance now this is in the uh, the Photoshop shortcuts uh, list there is a something under transform here we go so we've got shift control T which does a similar job but I don't believe it may be actually yeah there we go so what it's what shift control do, T is doing is repeating the same process but not actually duplicating the uh, the layer so by holding alt because we know that alt if we hold alt and move a layer it uh, it duplicates the layer so control alt shift t and it duplicates and does the transform so we can use that for things like here uh, i've drawn some uh, some perspective lines in advance and I can then take this uh, light post here, and <clears throat> if I position this correctly, and I and I've seen that, or I've figured out where I would like this uh, scale to be. Let's say 
let's just keep it nice and easy for for the demonstration purposes and I'll put the top top there bottom there and I'll line it up with actually I'll just offset it slightly from there and then I want to repeat this so I duplicate it and then activate the transform and then I can move this over to here say where where I believe the the next one should be and I can change that point there hold alt to scale it uh, based on the anchor point and now I'm happy with that control alt shift T and it repeats it into the distance so you can see it here now <clears throat> you can see that this is not uh, lining up with the background because there's distortion in the image um, so we have to warp these back but it's getting us the same uh, the same relative distance based on perspective and it's also scaling the image uh, correctly based on that so what's not immediately obvious is that it's actually scaling the distance that you've moved it as well uh, which like I said it's not immediately obvious so if we take a line tool and we go from here to here top to top and then we drag that over uh, let's say go a couple like over to here notice how the red line was once uh, the distance between one post and now it's almost the distance between two because it's actually scaling all of the values because we activated that transform uh, nice and like right at the start <clears throat> so uh, in this case you know we would obviously go through uh, on here and fix up our uh, just you know distort these back into matching the background uh, but this isn't always uh, an issue in a, in a visual effects environment it wouldn't be an issue at all because everything would be um, distortion corrected uh, but in this uh, example I'm just using a uh, an image that's just straight out of the camera All right and even this one here we can see is a little bit distorted so uh, probably a better idea would be actually to go in and, and distortion correct the background image first um, so that you can do that a lot easier uh, but you can see that if I fill those with red they are nicely distributed uh, along along that uh, that path. Now this will rely on you actually getting your perspective lines correct as well. Just so you just keep that in mind. Um, I have another example here, which is uh, this image here. And if we so I've prepared some um, uh, perspective lines, and these are much more rough. You can see that these don't actually uh, converge at the right point, uh, but it gets us. Uh, we have everything that we that we need uh, in this uh, example so I've created this uh, the good old sphere and uh, it's in between these two lines so if I duplicate it and then again control T move it back a, a distance that I'm happy with and actually wait let's do that again so I find when, when scaling something like this, I've positioned it here to that left edge. If you move that anchor and then hold Alt, it'll scale it to that anchor. All right, commit that and go Control. Oh, I forgot to activate transform first. Okay, so there we go. Control, Alt, Shift and I can create two more uh, copies of it into the distance that are relatively uh, spaced out now I've actually gone through and done this uh, in advance so that you can kind of see what it looks like so you can do this with shadows too so I've done a very crude uh, job of like casting this shadow down onto the ground so that it uh, integrates a little bit nicer but it's an incredibly useful tool to just quickly bash out especially if you're doing concept work or just layout and blocking uh, or you're trying to find out the um, just the the repeating distance of, of uh, two objects that go into the distance so uh, give it a go let me know what you think um, and uh, yeah have fun <laughs>